Good morning, carnivores. Uh, those who don't know me, my name is Vitaly. I've been on the carnivore diet just over a hundred days. Uh, I decided to try something new for you guys, a new format, um, dash cam, random thoughts. Uh, I want to see if you guys like it or not. Uh, so I woke up this morning, this, right now, uh, for me is uh, 5.18 in the morning, I'm driving to work, and uh, I woke up this morning, just like every day, did my personal hygiene, uh, drank some water, ate some sliced up, uh, Cured uh, salt cured uh, pork fat. Um, I basically keep that stuff in the freezer, take it out, slice it up with the, the thin slices, and just eat it uh, raw the way it is, uncooked. Uh, some of you already know that I grew up in Ukraine and this is a staple for us. Uh, my my recent thought, I've been thinking about it uh, when I went on the carnivore diet and I've been doing it for over 100 days. Uh, but seven years ago, I lost some people out of my life. I lost my dad and both of my grandparents. I lost my dad uh, because he got injured at work, broke his collarbone, fell, uh, he fell off the six foot ladder uh, took a basically head dive into the shop floor and broke his collarbone I took him to a emergency room they uh, uh, they did the x-ray found the broken collarbone uh, did the surgery on him basically put him uh, in a brace because you can't really put a cast on the shoulder and they warned him that uh, after uh, surgery he might develop blood clots in his leg so they told him to walk uh, he couldn't walk for long periods of time he was suffocating basically and uh, he went back to the hospital. They uh, did the scan. They found out that his uh, ribs were, bro were broken too, and uh, that's why he couldn't breathe really well. But he always had a problem with breathing. He had a whole bunch of inflammation in his body. Uh, he was wheezing all the time. So since he couldn't walk for long periods of time, he was sitting all the time and developed a uh, blood clot in his leg and uh, in the morning he woke up to go to the bathroom he went to the bathroom did his thing and walked out of the bathroom and collapsed and I was at work at that time and uh, my brother calls me and says hey uh, dad's in the hospital uh, he collapsed so I rushed uh, I left work, rushed to the hospital, and basically he was uh, he was gone. Um, there was a uh, doctor was still working on him, trying to resuscitate him, uh, doing the uh, CPR and uh, working on his chest, and, and yeah, and, and, yeah, he he basically died from. Uh, was then my mom decided to do an autopsy and uh, uh, when they did the autopsy they found out that from that injury he had a broken collarbone uh, broken ribs bruised lungs and bruised kidneys and my thought is uh, if he would eat the proper human diet not the sad diet. The sad is standard American diet. 
Would he survive that uh, blood clot? Would he develop that blood, those blood clots in his leg? Uh, would he still be around? I mean, I have no regrets or anything like that. It just, it just a thought that popped into my head. And from time to time, when I try to drive it to work, I think about it. Uh, so yeah, my dad's gone, and uh, both of my grandparents. When it can, uh, when it comes to them, my, my grandpa was sick all his life, basically, all the way from Ukraine. Um, he spent uh, two times, three years two times in the prison, uh, basically Soviet uh, gulag for not denouncing Christianity. He was hardcore Christian and when he went to army he wouldn't take the oath so they put him in prison. And uh, when he came out of the prison, well, basically it was just a slave camp in the Siberia uh, cutting trees down, the Kaiga. And when he came out, he got into prison again for same for same re uh, same reason. Now he wouldn't denounce the Christianity, his faith, basically, and that uh, pretty much destroyed his health because uh, Siberia is frozen all the time, and uh, working. Uh, we all know how Russia works. They use their slave power to the fullest. My grandma, she was working all the time in a field uh, uh, for a collective, a collective farm, uh, it's like collective farming. Uh, she, uh, she would go and plant the potatoes and then uh, she would uh, uh, weed the potatoes to pull all the weeds or the beets and whatnot. And uh, their diet basically in Ukraine was pork, potatoes, and the vegetables they grew in the ground. And they ate a lot of fat. I mean, a lot of fat. A uh, lot of pork fat. Uh, and uh, fresh meat, we barely had fresh meat. We had, we, when we would uh, slaughter the pig, uh, we eat fresh meat at that point. But uh, all the meat would go into the sausages and uh, can. So we would can all the meat and have it throughout the year like that. And uh, yeah, so basically it was a diet back in Ukraine. A lot of butter, a lot of dairy. And when we came to America, um, my gran grandma, well, she was always active going to the food banks and thrift stores uh, because she was on the SSI assisted living uh, from a government she was getting the government check and basically to for her to for them to survive they had to live below their means so she always hit in the thrift stores and food banks and it got to the point where uh, she would start hoarding all the stuff that she would buy because we didn't need none out of that and she would buy clothing from the thrift store for us she knew all the deals she would uh, go in the morning she knew all the deals she would buy clothing for us and we grew up we didn't need none of that because not, we could afford everything ourselves same thing with food from food banks and uh, uh, one time, uh, my aunts and my mom, they got in their uh, in their house and they they saw a whole bunch of stuff just being piled up, piled up, and uh, basically uh, they they got together and told her that she needs to stop doing that. And uh, she had problems with arthritis, and when they stopped her to do that, and they got uh, my aunt uh, got them living with them at that time. Her health just spiral, starts spiraling down. Uh, she wasn't active no more. She, uh, she, her life basically stopped, and she started getting sick. She get, she had a few micro strokes, um, and basically ended up in a diaper. She, I, I could tell that she was still there uh, in her mind. 
she was not good talk to her, she, she could not answer, but she would not, she would understand everything. And uh, the diet she was eating, basically everything that she doesn't really have to chew. Uh, like oatmeal and mashed potatoes and that kind of stuff. I uh, never saw fatty, fatty meats on her, on her plate. And same thing with my grandpa. My grandpa always, uh, was always uh, sick and always had uh, health problems. And uh, in America, they, I don't know, for some reason, they stopped eating really. Uh, when my grandma cooked, they ate whatever they wanted to eat. But when uh, they start eating uh, with my, uh, when uh, my aunt and my mom were taking care of them, they were feeding them basically what they could, uh, in their mind, what they could digest better without chewing. Because they have, both of them had no teeth. Basically, and they were just you can't really chew meat with your gums, and the hell just starts spiraling down really quick. And uh, uh, my, my grandma passed because uh, she was eating and she regurgitated uh, what she was eating, and that stuff went into her lungs. She regurgitated and swallowed, and that stuff went back into her lungs, and then she developed the infection. And uh, that's what she died from. And uh, not long after, my grandpa, uh, my grandpa passed away. Even though he's been sick all the time, he outlived my grandma. And he passed away. He had arthritis, not arthritis, uh, Parkinson's. Uh, that, that was really raging. Parkinson. I mean, it, it overtook his mind. And uh, 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 he was, uh, sometimes he would not be there. Like he would start uh, halluc uh, like uh, I would say hallucinating, seeing things from his past. And see, my, my thought is, uh, if they'll be eating that uh, proper human diet, uh, basically zero carb diet, uh, would the arthritis? My grandma and Parkinson's and my grandpa would be halted or slowly reversed and they would be still around. And that's not only my grandma and grandpa and my dad. Uh, I have uncles that died uh, from cancer. Uh, I had uh, uncles that died from uh, uh, stroke. And would they still be around if uh, they, would be eat, they were eating a proper human diet? I mean, I'm not blaming anybody. I mean, we did what we did. I mean, look, I mean, if you if you see me, I was 380 pounds when I started the diet. I was 378. Uh, we all did what we thought. Uh, we did emotionally. We, we, what we thought it was right to do emotionally. The way we ate, the way we lived our lives. So, I mean, I guess it was just a lack of knowledge. Um, like, I, I cannot blame myself for what I did to myself. Or I should, maybe I should blame myself for what I did, but uh, I mean, I didn't know better. I knew I wasn't getting healthy, but something happened in my life that made me do this. I mean, I mean, there's uh, consequences for everything, for every action, there is action, there is a reaction. So, that's the, that's the thought that I, that I had, how the thing popping, popping into my head all the time. And now, my mom has arthritis in her hands. And uh, I I told her why why would not why you not won't try uh, at least keto have uh, half a plate of vegetables and half a plate of meat start slowly and see how you do just cut out all the vegetables that have oxalates high high on the oxalates and try it out and she keeps telling me I hate meat I don't like meat. Even though every time I cook meat, 
for our family gathering. She just picks up on that. She loves my meat that I cook. She enjoys that meat. It doesn't matter if it's gonna be pork butt, brisket, uh, a leg of lamb, chicken wings. She loves all that stuff when I cook it. But when it comes to her cooking, she doesn't like it. I mean, it's hard to convince somebody uh, to, to, to do something, to make some kind of change, even though they see change in you. Uh, same, same thing with kids. It's hard to make him eat a proper human diet because, I mean, even though you can control it at home, but you cannot control you just had a sip of water, but you cannot control what they eat when they go outside to play with their friends and go to school. You can't control that. For my, uh, for my younger daughter, we, we make our own lunches, so she eats somewhat healthy. And all of my kids, they love meat, but at the same time, they like their candy and ice cream and popsicles and whatnot. And I, I'm not taking away that from them. I limit how much they eat, but I'm not taking it away. They need to learn slowly how to eat properly. And when, when they're kids, that young, I have a, a three-year-old and a six-year-old and a 14-year-old. 14-year-old, she knows, but uh, she does what she does. I cannot really control it. Yeah. So, this is the thought, and let me know down in the comments if you like this format, uh, recording with the dash cam and just me speaking in the background, or I should stop doing <laughs> recording with the dash cam. I mean, my dash cam is running all, all the time while I drive, and uh, as I always say, Eat healthy, live healthy and live strong, move a lot, if you can't move, try to move, get up or lift your leg or lift your hands, uh, be happy, and I would appreciate if you guys comment below what you think, and maybe you have some kind of concerns or thoughts, let's open up a conversation about this. And let's try to change the world one person at a time, starting with uh, with ourselves. And uh, like the video, subscribe to my channel, help me out, uh, help you out, help out the algorithm to push this video, my videos to more people. So at least, like I said, one person can change their life by watching my thoughts and my videos, my journey. I would appreciate if you should share it. Alright. Time to cut it off. See you next time in the next video. Bye.